We are the men of Texaco. We wear the Texaco star. We like to Hi everyone. Welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and Bill Day update number seven of our MRC Texaco station. Well, I like to bring people back like every maybe 10 hours worth of build time. And that's right where we are right now. Even though it doesn't seem like a whole H of a lot got done, it really did. Um, let's start with the biggest pain in the rump, our uh, oil pan, or our oil can rack. You can see I got all the decals on here now, and they're all looking pretty good. They were not easy at all to put together or put on. Um, a little tedious uh, is an understatement with this. Um, the uh, decals are old and they were kind of stiff. So they just did not want to wrap around here. And I figured the best way to do this was to cut them in half. So the decals don't wrap all the way around anymore. They just wrap halfway around. And even with that, they did not want to go. So what I ended up doing is I got my Microsaw and Microset that I've had for years. This stuff goes a long way. Um, but it's almost invaluable to... Um, putting decals on places that are just a pain in the rump to do. And I also stole the wife's uh, hair dryer. So what I did is I took the can and I put the uh, micro set on it, which if you see I have labeled number one. And I, I put that on it. And then I got the decal just sitting to where it was sitting flat on there. And I took tweezers and held that in front of the hair dryer and kind of wrapped it going back and forth this way. And the heat of the hair dryer and the micro set starting to dry helped pull that decal around the can. Um, it got most of the way, but it would just wouldn't wrap around the backside. And then what I did is I put the microsol on it all the way around the can again, so it even went uh, behind and underneath the edges. Then I got the hair dryer. Now I'm running the hair dryer on low and low fan, and that made it to where it pulled the decal all the way around. And with that, there was um, joyfulness and very happy drinking <laughs> that happened because it was just a bugger. Uh, I bet you from start to finish, this, the whole rack, front and back, just the cans, um, took me two and a half to three hours. Um, and that includes putting this fiddly uh, rack together, too. The uh, rack, it was two side pieces, the top six little bars that went across, and then three bars that came across the outside. Um, if you look, you can see, like back here, you can see a little bit of the, the aluminum on the can. And you know what? I am okay with that. Because sitting in between the two gas pumps, that's going to be fine. Um, I'm happy. You can see Jake is happy. So we're going to leave it at that, and we'll move on to the next, um, which was another uh, project from a long time here, and that's the three um, Coke bottle racks. And I don't know if you remember me doing these way back when, but what I did is underneath these two, I painted the whole underside of the bottles. I didn't paint anything on the bottles, just the underside with Tamiya's uh, X19 
the smoke. And as soon as I did that, you could see these, these bottles turn the opaque brown color. And then on top of each one of the bottles, I took Tamiya's X7 and just dotted them. And that made it look like they had the bottle caps on them. And I'm telling you, I feel like I'm rocking the paradise with that. The one right here, you see I have some empties. And what I did is underneath this one, and I'm going to flip this one over, is underneath this one, instead of painting it the smoke, I painted it uh, Tamiya's X9 brown. And I painted all the way around all the wood on all of these with the X9. And then after that was done, it looks just like an empty pop bottle. So I had the full ones, I had the empty ones, and we were good to go. This sat like this for months. Um, just because I was involved in a few other things and all kinds of stuff. And now it was time to decal this out because I want to get this wrapped up. These decals were really trying to fall apart. So I cut them as close to the decal as I could. I put them on using microset, and as soon as that decal hit that microset, it was locked into position. There was no changing it. So if you do this, make sure that you hit right where it's got to be. Um, fortunately, these were going to be weathered a little bit. So like this one where the decal just completely turned into sawdust in the water, I was okay with that because, I mean, these things get used and they get worn. So after I was done getting the decals on, they were super bright and shiny and brand new looking, and we just couldn't have that in our shop. So I took my Weathermaster D from Tamiya, and I used the oil for that, and the applicator that came with it, and I just went straight up and down, um, or not even up and down, I just went straight from the top to the bottom, and came back and went to the top to the bottom, all the way across these, until they looked oily enough to where they, you know, they didn't look new. I sure didn't want these things to look um, brand factory fresh. And they stack up real nice. And they go next to the Coke machine. And they're going to look awesome in there. So now, since we brought the Coke machine into um, this uh, update... Remember, I cut the red plastic off of the front of this. And I cut a piece of plexiglass that fit into the box where the red plex. I cut a piece of clear plexiglass uh, to fit into where that red piece would have been. And then I took the front piece and with my... Uh, Gallery's CS36 airbrush, I painted this all the X9. And I let that dry. And then I came in with my 0 0.5, or my 0 0.5, my 5 aught paintbrush. And I painted the wood grain. And just, you know, as good as I could do it. I'm pretty happy with that. I try to get them close together, but not to where it turned it all black. And then I let that sit for, uh, I guess, a day and a half. And I came back after that with my X26, I believe it is, the uh, clear orange. And I, with the same airbrush, I sprayed the clear orange on that. And I put two coats of clear orange on there. And man, I'm telling you, that looks like the decal that would have been there. So tickled to death with that. Then I came in and I painted all the uh, metal. And I used my uh, flat aluminum, which is XF16. And I got all that painted and then I stopped. And I <laughs> took and put the decal on the clear. 
And I, these are each individual ones are decals. And then this is the coin, the coin slot and everything. And that's a decal, but this was clear. So I had to come back with my five odd brush and paint that with the flat aluminum just to, um, color it in and make it look like those are individual push buttons and all that. And I was happy with that. So I took the glass back out, took the front off, which I didn't glue on or anything. And then I'll show you in this picture, I took a three millimeter LED and made a little bracket for it to, sign, to sit in behind the Coca-Cola sign. And then I just wired that out the back with a uh, um, wire that I cut off one of my mini LEDs. So I sacrificed one of the mini LEDs to make this work, ran it to a CR2032, and are you ready for this? <laughs> we got a lit Coke machine. And that is rocking. <laughs> and it was so easy to do. Like I said, anybody could do this. Now, once this is in the station, instead of a CR2032 battery, which I got back here, what I'm going to end up using is an Arduino uh, computer chip. And that runs off of, it. its output is 5 volts. So I will have to do resistors with anything that I'm running these little LEDs to in the shop just so I don't burn them out. Because these are only 3.3, I think, max voltage. And the, the Arduino is a 5 volt. So we'll put the resistors in there and I'll just run them in line. And when I solder them to the, to the board, I'll drop the resistor in. And once I figure out which one it is, in one of these updates down the road, I will put the resistor down in the description down here somewhere. So... <laughs> Um, we'll be good to go with that, and everybody will be able to, um, light their Coke machine without burning out the resistor down the road, because it'll light with, with a 5 volt, it'll light up, and it'll light up nice, but over time, it'll end up burning that thing out. So, throw the resistor in, and you'll be good to go. With the CR2032 battery, like in my, my Roadsters and my cars that I've lit, those are already 3 volts, so you don't have to worry about that, and it'll never burn out. But since you're up in the voltage, you have to lower the voltage to the re to the LED, and those resistors are for that. So now, for the last thing, and I'm not going to hold you up very long today, but I do want to show you a couple more things. One of them, and I've got to back way out. This is why I'm holding this. Let me see if I can stretch this here. There we go. That's going to be the sign, the Texaco Street sign. And what it is, is it's two pieces up top and then the plastic down below. But this piece right here, um, I couldn't use plastic because I'm going to light this. So this is this kind of brass. There's two different sizes. So I have a, uh, a bigger one and then goes smaller when it goes up, just like they did, um, with the plastic piece that I still have in the box there, um, it gives it that tapered effect look. So you got to strengthen stronger piece of pipe, and then it goes up as it as it doesn't need the strength. And now this is run. Um, what I found online because I tried nine hundred different things to Sunday to try to get this thing to light, and I was about to give up on it. And then I found these on Amazon. And what it is, is just a strip LED light, but it's 5 volt. And it came with a USB plug on the end. And I found out something, too, is a charging USB plug is different than what came with this. Um, for some reason, I couldn't get any brightness out of this with um, my regular USB plug. And I'm not talking the, the socket that the plug plugs into. I'm talking the, the male plug, um, this end of the plug. When I used the one I used for everything else, these were like a third of the brightness.
But now when I plug this in, let's see if I can do this with one hand. I'm sorry about all the um, shaking and stuff going on, but you're going to have to just deal with it because I don't have a good tripod. But you're ready for this? Pow! That is going to be more than bright enough to light that Texaco sign underneath the decal. So if you bear with me a second, I'm going to pull the decal out that's still on the paper. And we'll put that up there. And you can see that that's going to be more than bright enough because you can see that lighting through the paper. So those are going to look pretty cool. Um, and what I did is every one of these little silver pieces you can cut in half and you can solder a wire to them so if, like from here to here is one strand so i could actually light just this and what it, up in there is this just literally wrapped around like this on the inside and this is a lot easier to do with two hands buddy i'll tell you that right now <laughs> But it's just wrapped around inside there. Um, so all the light points in. Um, and that way I really don't have to worry about uh, light diffusion on the outside as much. Because I am going to paint that. And what I'll do is I'll paint that uh, flat aluminum first. Let it dry. And then I'll paint it again with flat white. Because I don't want it real shiny. Um, I just want it to be white. And then the decal in the front will shine through. And we got the cement base. And we're good to go. But the other thing I can do with that now, if I can find the part, which I just had, is this is the, uh, the top of the fuel pumps. And you can see there's, there's little holes in this. Look at my wires are loose here. There's little holes in the top of this because it's supposed to have spotlights that shine towards the uh, filling station. But on the inside, it's supposed to have fluorescent lights. Well, guess what? These fit really well in there. So I'm going to put a strip in each side and light it. And then um, using the Arduino and the controls in the Arduino, I'll try to dim them out just a little bit so I'm not overpowering my gas pump lights. But the other thing I'm going to try to do is these are little clear spotlights that go in these holes right in here. And I'm sorry for jumping around with the camera, but I can't do this with the camera in its mount today. But what I did is I already drilled or painted one of these silver and I drilled a hole in the front of it. I did not paint this part. So what I'm going to try to do, and I haven't done it yet because I just painted this last night and it was wet and I haven't had time to try it tonight and I won't have time to try it tonight, but I'm going to use one of those micro LEDs and where I drilled the hole is right up in here. Um, and I did it before I painted this. So now I'm going to have to just ream it out a little bit because I got paint inside there. And I'm going to put one of those LEDs in there and see if it shines out the front like a spotlight. And if it does, I'll take and put, what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five. I'll take the five of them, do the same thing with them, and I'll drill a little hole in the front, run the, the wires down through the front with the LED going up into the spotlight. And then I can just run the wires you know, I can tie all these wires together and then run one set of wires down through the pole from the, from the, you know, I have, I'm going to use the same pole as this down through that pole into the base of the fuel pumps out of that. And then I'll run them and tie them into, um, the led strips. I'll tie into these little wires here for the five volt. And then the spotlights, oh, I can run those, um, I'll have to have a resistor for them. So I can tie all of those together with one resistor into the Arduino, and then I'll be able to turn these on separate. And my whole plan is to be able to um, control the fuel pumps, be able to turn on both pumps, 
be able to turn this on afterwards, be able to turn the spotlights on individually, be able to light this up by itself, and also be able to control the lights in our um, Coke machine. Um, I got some lights that I'm going to build for in the shop itself um, that I got some secrets that I'm planning on doing, and we'll see if it works. But down the road, we'll do those. Um, and I'm not going to say any more about that until I find out if it works or not. So <laughs> I'm going to let you go there. This is, like I said, with all of this, we're, we're talking a good 10 hours worth of work. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, being straight up with that. I'm not trying to fudge time or anything. So it took time to do it just because I was fumbling around trying to figure out what I'm doing. Uh, if I had to do this again, I bet you that 10 hours would turn into two, to be honest with you, because now I know what I'm doing. So with that, the last thing I want to say is don't forget about on Facebook from starting in January, we're going to do a group Corvette build. Um, I picked out my color. I'm going to use gunmetal and a red interior with a red stripe on the hood. Um, if you want to participate, go ahead to Facebook. Here's the link to my um, Facebook page, uh, a Facebook group page. And sign up there, and then you can sign up for the uh, group build. And we'd love to have you. And then with that, I'm going to let you go. So y'all have a great day, a better tomorrow, a super Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year to everybody out there. Um, if you don't celebrate Christmas, have a great holiday. Enjoy yourself. Don't get dumb. <laughs> and we'll see you again next year. Thanks again for watching.